Good morning. We'll give folks a few more minutes to come on in. Everyone has made their last minute edits of the slides, right? Like, no, no, none of that usual thing, none of that. Everyone goes, yes, yes, uh huh. I'm not refreshing them. I say this every time and I'm not doing it. <laughs> Amy, why, why, are you, why are you looking at me, Amy? <laughs> I'm looking at all of you. It's collective. There's all of you. <laughs> I think you just need to enforce this and just never ever reload it. I mean, I've tried, and then everybody's like, oh, but I had something good, and then, then, then it just turns into like, all right, fine. Learning through pain. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check to make sure that Liz didn't tell me that she's not coming or something, that I've missed it. I don't think so. Oh, excellent. Okay. I was just looking around at my email to be like, did Liz tell me she wasn't coming? Did I miss Sorry, it? No, yeah, I'm I'm <laughs> I was giving everyone trouble for uh, uh, not having a, a, you know, the last minute festival of these slides in here. Um, but I will go ahead and post slides as well. All right. All right, should we get started? Indeed. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, okay, so you've made it um, here. <laughs> sorry, say that again. It's the you have made it here slides. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm almost, almost here mentally. Yes, no, I am here. Right. Uh, so projects that need TOC input, and I know there's some. Uh, I'm looking at this and thinking, are these the, these are all annual review ones, right? So these are our current annual reviews out here. We've got a Brigade, Network Service Mesh, we've got OpenEBS, CubeEdge, and Telepresence, and all of these need TOCIs on them. Okie doke. TOC so. folks. Yes, exactly. Hello, friends. Get in there. Um, we also have some incubation... Those things. votes went out yesterday, so we have... Um, TIKV and we have Rook that have, has gone out. I, I left those alone as far as like the projects needing TOC input, but um, the, the vote <laughs> reminders will go out at the end of this week. So lots of good things happening running around in here. That's great. And I, th I think there's also some projects applying for incubation where we need some sponsorship from, you know, somebody those to are take included a little bit further years. down. Okay. The SIGs okay. have, have, have okay. done a great Sorry. job of being able to shepherd them. Nope, nope. We are all good. This, this is all lovely. So, all right then. <laughs> Any comments on those before we move on to SIG updates? Okay, great. Let's all right. let's see. Look like SIG app delivery uh, up first. Let me see if they're on the line even. wandering through and it doesn't look like we've got any of those folks here. But um, uh, so that being said, they've got some uh, Cloud Native Summit China talks, um, which is kind of exciting in here. That's kind of one of the things that I wanted to highlight was, hey, look, we are going to be able to do that. And then they're doing things. So um, other fun things, um, Justin Cormack, uh, Cloud Native Build Packs. Yeah. On the spot. Uh, yes. I'm working on it. 
but, but yeah, um, I'm looking for looking for end users who are using it. If you are one such, please contact me. Great. Lovely. Or if you know of anyone, if you know of anyone who knows of anyone who is using cloud native build packs, send them to Justin. <laughs> okay. Right. Sig so computer I guess computer strategy. Sig app delivery arrives. We can we can come back to that. Right, we can move back. We, we're we're good about this. It's fine. I think I saw Paris is here. I don't know. If yes, I am. I uh, and I'm actually taking Josh's place. Josh was supposed to be here, so I'm kind of doing what the JavaScript community calls battle decks right now. So. Um, <laughs> Josh could not be here since his regrets. Uh, I am here in his steed. Uh, hello everyone. How are you? I hope everyone's doing all right, safe, staying inside, staying sane and things like that. Uh, we have actually been doing a ton of work, uh, inside of this SIG. Uh, and of course we're always looking for new contributors. Um, the first thing that we have published is a letter sent to the maintainers with a survey link and a ton of other stuff. Uh, the action here for TOC and everybody that's on this call right now is to please take the survey, not only just the survey inside, but there's a ton of other introductory information about our group in there and how we can provide support to your projects. Um, we will be also doing sort of this as a focus group style because we know that people have survey fatigue, so you can uh, you might catch me at one of your project's community meetings. I might come introduce myself and say hello and do sort of a live question and answer session if folks don't necessarily have the time to do the survey. The survey is important to us because it has to do with uh, where we're going to be starting with uh, a lot of the sub-project activity that I'm about to tell you about. Uh, there is going to be a CNCF blog post that uh, pretty much reads as this letter, but just in a blog post format that Juliet CNCF helped us out with. That's going to be going live this week. Uh, so you'll also uh, be able to share that as well. Um, we did have a change of chairs as, uh, as well lately, if anybody uh, missed that. Um, uh, Jared, unfortunately, has some um, personal obligations that he wants to attend to, but he's still going to be sticking around and contributing to the group. Stephen Augustus is going to be stepping up into the chair duties, so you may see Stephen here next month doing the status. Um, and then as far as some of the sub-project activities uh, to drill down a little bit deeper, uh, we've got a governance working group now that's uh, spun up officially, a contributor growth uh, group that's spun up officially, and maintainer circle. Uh, we're almost, almost there. Um, just some highlights in each one of those. Uh, the governance and actually the contributor growth that doesn't have a bullet there actually moving their meetings based on growth of both of those working groups and the people that are now involved in them. Um, so uh, those meetings are now being moved to accommodate better times for those folks. Um, the governance working group's also been working on the maintainer uh, multi-org requirement. It's obviously a very testy issue that y'all have seen uh, that Josh moved to the TOC repo instead of our contributor strategy repo. Um, at TOC members and the community is also very welcome to look in our issue log, uh, backlog uh, inside of the contributor strategy stuff. That's, st uh, that's just things that we're working on that make it moved over to the TOC repo once they're in a better state. TBD. Um, as far as the maintainer circles uh, is concerned, this is something that I'm really looking forward to myself personally, uh, but just getting maintainers together on a smaller scale, but a lot uh, to talk about topics that uh, are either learning or uh, something that uh, can be taken away in a value add. Uh, one of the first uh, maintainer circles that we're going to run is going to be on inclusive language. Uh, so we can all talk together about that. I know several projects have already made huge strides in this area. Some have already submitted and approved PRs. Uh, others are forming working groups like Kubernetes. Uh, so how can we all learn together from that? So that's going to be the first maintainer circle topic. Karen Chu is uh, going to be helping me. Uh, Karen does great events. If uh, I'm sure everybody on the line knows Karen. Uh, so Karen's going to help, help out with that as well. 
uh, the contributor growth team has been working on a documentation template and the idea of a template repo for projects to fork essentially uh, with some templates in there like contributing guides, author, uh, author.md, et cetera. Uh, and this also, uh, I just want to reiterate, is based on a lot of the survey feedback that we're going to be getting back. Um, so if there is something that you like about a project, please fill it out. Um, you don't even necessarily have to fill out the whole thing. Um, this is just really about like uh, best practices and how we can surface that data, right? So uh, I've already mentioned the bullet below about uh, Kubernetes working group naming. We are obviously uh, staying close to them with Steven now being a chair of, uh, of ours as well. So we have some of that uh, continuity there, um, which is nice. Uh, this is also an open invite for all of you to attend our uh, bi-weekly Thursday meetings uh, or any of our working group meetings. The next working group is actually today in a few hours and that's the governance working group. We also have been doing some side reviews of projects that's not even necessarily on this slide. So when I say we've been busy, we've definitely been busy. Um, like CubeEdge and some other folks. Uh, so if there's any TOC members here that would like uh, our official uh, guidance or weigh in or anything uh, on any, for any projects on deck, just let us know. And that's it. Fantastic. So just to uh, double check on the survey, do you want maintainers of existing projects to answer that, maintainers of any projects, what's the kind of? Um, anyone that considers themselves an upstream contributor. Uh, we'll work out the fuzzy details on the end. Uh, we just want to hear kind of from everybody that's working upstream. So uh, maintainers are, you know, the most preferred, especially because there's some kind of questions on there that will feed into maintainer circle as well. So main uh, maintainers, the, the preferred, but I'd rather see all projects represented than wait around for right. very busy maintainers. And like so I said, anyone we'll... who's contributing to a project could be. Yeah, for sure. Answering. Great. Uh, we're going to come back to the multi organization issue at the end of today. Uh, but aside from that, anyone got any questions or comments? Um, maybe with my maintainer hat on the one, um, there is already a maintainer so which CNCF sends out every year. Uh, will those be spliced together going forward? We can certainly talk about this. I mean, this is, uh, you can see on the, the survey itself, it's a much more deep dive into uh, the actual mechanics of how you run your groups. Whereas the maintainer survey, I think it's like a pulse on CNCF's work and a pulse on the TOC and a pulse on, it's just like a general, um, just pulse of how you're doing, I think, uh, where this is like, hey, do you all have contributing at markdown files? Do you really like them? Uh, like that kind of stuff. So feel free to delegate to, I mean, if you are a busy maintainer and you've got folks growing up in the ranks, say here, take the survey you know, um, take the survey for us kind of thing. That's fine. Um, but like I said, I, I'm one, I'm happy to, uh, you know, definitely combine in the future, but this is hopefully a one-off. Um, I don't necessarily see that, you know, going into this depth from here on out with 50 other projects. Oh, I'm on mute. Um, okay. Unless anyone has any more questions. Thank you, Paris. Thank you, SIG Contributor Strategy. Who's next? Network. SIG Network. Oh, mm. Amy, can you refresh this? No, I'm just, uh, just kidding. Uh, uh, so not included on the slide is the, the fact that uh, Contour as a project has been voted in at incubation level. Uh, so welcome Contour. Uh, there is uh, much diligence on the project. Uh, the folks are, folks are pretty pumped. Um, it's good. Uh, speaking of projects getting accepted, uh, three uh, Sandbox projects have also recently come through and been accepted into Sandbox. Um, one is uh, Kuma, uh, another BFE, and another CNI Genie. 
So um, congrats to those projects, those maintainers. Um, uh, Chaos Mesh is um, also up for uh, review under the new sandbox uh, project proposal process and is reapplying for um, consideration. Uh, the well, in some respects, Paris is making us uh, it look a bit bad. The the we we've been busy as well, although <laughs> we we have uh, not a. Uh, not as many updates since um, last time we met. Um, we're uh, wor working on collecting interested parties in the, as we go to form the service mesh performance um, working group. Um, some of those early interested parties are, are listed here. Uh, we also, uh, network service mesh is up for its annual review. It's a, a sandbox level project. Um, I think that's that's probably in the in the queue that we were talking about earlier for the TOC. Uh, also, kind of in queue for TOC is we we recently received a presentation from um, the Ambassador Project, and they're applying for um, incubation level consideration. Um, and and that's that's it. Yeah. I'm interested in two notable exceptions who aren't on the participant list for the performance working group. Um, well, I guess Nighthawk Envoy, is that, is that Envoy the project? Um, and the other one, uh, Linkerd. Yeah, Linkerd and, uh, yep, that's just oversight, I think on the, the listing here is actually the list of interested parties of the service meshes specifically um, that are interested in, um, there's multiple aspects of what the working group is going to be um, walking through. The short of it to your, to your question is there's actually a long list of service meshes that much earlier on have um, expressed interest and desire to participate. Um, Linkerd is um, certainly one of those. Uh, Linkerd, um, I guess I won't, I won't go through. Won't go through the list, but it just uh, we've <laughs> we probably talked about twenty different service meshes, um, uh, each of which, uh, at various points, have said they are keenly interested in um, understanding their own performance and being kind of well, you know, being well represented in under that topic, under the topic of performance. Um, Okay. Any other questions for SIG Network? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm kind of new to all this. So I have a question. Uh, we are a telecom company, actually. We are, uh, it's a Mavenir. We are uh, uh, in 5G radio and the uh, packet core. And uh, recently, you probably know, we won uh, this project. So how do we inject telecom specific requirements into it? Because we have a lot of questions on mesh. We are currently using Istio, which is not very good to what we are doing, to the use cases that the telecom has. How can we collaborate and uh, inject our view on what needs to be done? Requirements, because we are up to the point were we even thinking of building our own lightweight mesh uh, because Istio doesn't work well with what we need? Yeah. Uh, I'm really pumped that you asked that question. <laughs> There's a long, the, the short of it is, um, please come to the next, the, the, we'll make that a topic of the next um, uh, SIG network meeting. The, we, I think actually last time that we gave an update to this same update, uh, we were talking about one of the focuses of that uh, that service mesh working group uh, being on patterns uh, and practices and those patterns uh, of how people are using and kind of are using a service mesh is inclusive of what it is that people that users really need. Um, we're not in a we're in a position to give feedback to each of those service meshes. Those are relationships that, you know, that we're, we're frequently spending time with. 
uh, we're not in a position to to dictate to them what what to do, but um, but all have been receptive to this type of feedback, um, and so yeah, uh, please ping me in advance of the or or Ken Owens, the other chair on um, Sig Network, in advance of um, you know just after this call. Let's let's that's a very interesting topic. Yeah, and we can we can discuss about uh, deployment of what we are doing in public network versus private network and how it impacts networking in general. It has much more, I would say, dependencies. It's not just service mesh. Service mesh is very impacted by what 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 we are doing. It would be very interesting to to, to discuss. Totally. Thank you. Thank you, Zeev. Right. Any other comments on SIG Network or questions? All right. Who's here from SIG Observability? Yes. Can you reload the slides, please? No, just jumpers. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, from our end, um, the, um, there is a thread which is kind of long-lived um, about the tech lead. Um, Amy told me she will be sending the formal uh, voting thing today, which I failed to do. Sorry for this. Um, for the third chair, we are looking for nominations again. So anyone who has any suggestions or interest or anything, uh, please poke us. Uh, also, FYI, we will have our next call right after this call. There's an update on incubations. Um, uh, actually, I didn't update the slides, but that's on me. Um, Cortex did answer the questions that they are currently in progress with, uh, with getting back uh, on all the due diligence questions. And Thanos is now in the public comment phase. Um, we did start work on, on data analysis as a subject, and we started with a document which is collecting use cases, and we will be discussing this in 35 minutes. And we also intend to work on best current practices docs, but there's nothing yet which, which we could link or show. That's the real quick update. I'm so cool. glad you stated out what BCP was so I didn't have to ask. <laughs> yeah, I realized it's like it's a super common term within ITF uh, and the networking space, but it's not so much uh, within CNCF. Yeah, but it's basically best current practices with with the emphasis, emphasis on current uh, as an acknowledgement that this is always changing. Okay, so I guess if anyone has any ideas for good nominations for a third chair for SIG Observability, now is a good time to get in touch with you. Any other comments or questions? Uh, just a quick compliment on the on the Thanos uh, due diligence. Very very well done, especially for such a relatively newly formed SIG. Uh, I've been passing that around as a kind of uh, example of how to do a good due diligence of a project. So well done. Thank you. Awesome. Excellent. All right, who's here for runtime? Oh, that's me, Quinton. Hello. Um, uh, fairly <laughs> brief. Uh, so CubeEdge is a project that we've had in uh, Sandbox for a while now. Uh, they've applied for incubation. Uh, they've done a great job of putting all the information together for the due diligence. We're just working through some of the final steps there, but it, it looks uh, pretty well set up to be kind of done in time for KubeCon Asia. Um, we have uh, Quay, which has applied for incubation. Uh, and that's going through uh, due diligence at the moment. Uh, it's looking for a TOC sponsor, if anyone is willing to do that. Oh, QBedge, by the way, we do already have TOC sponsors. Uh, so really, really are just sort of following the process now. It should go into public uh, comment, I believe, this week, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know if Elena is here. She's been doing a great job of uh, <coughs> looking after us as a SIG. Um, We've also uh, had a bunch of interesting uh, interactions with a bunch of different projects. Uh, oh, and so, so maybe I should actually step back. SIG Runtime is, is a SIG which, which deals with all things related to containers, essentially. Container runtimes, container orchestration, container uh, registries. Uh, many, many things that have the word, in, word container in them are included in the scope of this SIG. 
Um, so uh, we've been doing a pretty good job, and uh, actually one of my coaches, Ricardo, has been doing a really good job of uh, reaching out to projects that are kind of outside of the direct CNCF um, uh, what's the right word, community, uh, and interacting with those. So we've had a bunch of those uh, going on recently. Uh, Lupine is a sort of research project in uh, a very um, lightweight um, virtual machines and containers. <clears throat> um, we've also been interacting with GVisor. Uh, Crustlet uh, is a project for uh, running uh, WebAssembly in uh, containers and Kubernetes, essentially. Um, and I think that is a sort of high level summary of what we've been up to. Oh, container device interface I didn't mention. Uh, that was also uh, interesting. So this is all around uh, how to standardize on interfaces with uh, slightly strange devices. So uh, GPUs are one of them, FPGAs are another one, uh, ASICs, uh, these kinds of things, which are increasingly becoming necessary uh, Mellanox uh, uh, advanced network interface cards are another example. Um, so all of these things are becoming increasingly used in particularly machine learning environments. Um, so they're becoming very interesting and uh, it's very useful to have standards uh, for these things to be inter interfaced with uh, through cloud native technologies. Uh, so that's another area that we're working closely with. And that's it. Great. I'm just looking at that lupine thing. It looks right up my street. I'm just going to take a look at that. <laughs> um, any other questions for runtime? Okay, so over to storage. Um, so we have uh, votes out for the graduation uh, of TIKV and Rook. The, the you know we've done the due diligence and the public comment period uh, was done last uh, the last couple of weeks. Um, we also have uh, Proviga um, who have uh, presented to the SIG um, as a uh, project uh, for incubation. Um, as a SIG, we'd like to recommend this to move forward. So we need um, a, a talk sponsors and we can start a, a due diligence review. Um, the Proviga is a, uh, a streaming storage um, project. Uh, so there are, there are some similarities to uh, both the Nats project and to Kafka, for example. So, and, and there's quite a, a detailed comparison in the, in the, in the proposal document. Um, and they've already, and Pravika have already done a fairly extensive uh, re uh, presentation with Q&A at the SIG storage, if, if any of the talk members want to, uh, want to have a review of that. Um, the CNCF storage landscape version two um, was released uh, on Monday. Um, the, the, there's a link to the white paper there and the, the CNCF uh, team uh, helped us out uh, and, and put a blog post together, which was kind of cool. Um, and we've also got um, a new project coming up uh, who are presenting to, to the SIG um, and will be um, applying for the Sandbox uh, project, the, the Prius project, which is, um, which is based on uh, Linstore and the RDB uh, on underlying projects too. Um, and finally, we've also got um, sessions for both KubeCon EU and the and Shanghai um, and China I mean sorry um, where uh, we'll be doing some presentations there too. That's me. Great everyone is admiring the SIG storage logo. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, can, you can thank me for that. Fantastic. So if any other SIGs are looking for their Lego, it looks like uh, Amy is the person who's uh, arranging that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is fantastic. Also, um, I think the fact that you've done a blog post is great. And um, I guess if any other SIGs have any uh, announcements or news they want to share with the world, a CNCF blog post is probably a good way to do it. It's a great idea. 
Okay. Um, did do we have anybody from uh, app delivery? I know we kind of skipped over it, so I don't know if uh, anyone had any comments they wanted to make uh, in their absence. I did see we had someone from Backstage who's here, which is great. Backstage does look very interesting. Thanks for joining us. Uh, right, I think, yeah, Six Security, presumably they are not with us this month. That is correct. They sent their regrets. Right. So look forward to being able to come back next month. Yes. Okay. So I think the one other topic we have is this, um, maybe, you know, have a bit of discussion around the maintainer diversity requirement. Um, so the issue that's linked in the slides, really, I'm going to paraphrase the saying, we have this graduation requirement that says there should be um, maintainers from more than one organization, we should document why that's a requirement. A long thread ensues. Uh, and kind of coming out of that discussion, Alexis ended up writing uh, a pretty detailed document with some suggestions around um, clarify, essentially saying we could have a steering committee. You know, it doesn't have to just be maintainers, it, you know, control of a project direction doesn't just have to be in the hands of people who are making code commits. Um, so he's basically come up with this proposal. I'm just going to try and find the link and copy it. Um, yeah, so, oh, Justin got there at the same time as me. Um, I'm sure we're not going to sort of read through the whole thing now, but I wanted to flag it up and see if anyone has any thoughts or comments about this general idea. Hi Liz, this is Colin Sullivan from the Nats Project. And um, I just want to say, I think this is a great idea for projects like ours that we do have generally as a whole, a uh, very diverse ecosystem of contributing companies. Uh, but we do have a couple of repositories of servers, which have, um, as of late, the last year or so, due to adding a lot of new features, do uh, appear and, and do have contributors from primarily one company at this point. Um, if this would be a path to move forward with graduation, uh, we'd be all behind it. And, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to, to seeing what comes out of this. Great. Yeah, um, I've already commented on, this is Josh Burkus, I haven't commented on the document a bit, um, <clears throat> requested to Alexis that we actually add this to the advisory documents that we're assembling in governance working group, um, you know, because that's part of the reason the governance working group exists. Um, the, um, and I can definitely see this as a way of handling the sort of catch 22 of, hey, <clears throat> we need to have maintainers from other organizations involved in the project, but it's hard to get maintainers when you currently only have people from one company working on it because people from other organizations don't see themselves as eligible. Um, the, um, and outside of the CNCF, I've seen other projects sort of bootstrap having a broader spread of input through a steering committee or similar body. Um, so, you know, as one path for CNCF projects, it's, it's excellent. It's a very nice document, um, from Alexis. Great, great. Um, one question I have, and I'm sure there are people on this call who can answer this quite well, is how similar is this proposal to the existing Kubernetes steering committee model? I would say TBD, um, as is pointed out in the comments, um, in the, the original text, Alexis is talking about an appointed steering committee. 
um, which is going to be appropriate, particularly for projects that are trying to bootstrap multi-organization, right? If you're trying to bootstrap multi-organization, if you have an elected steering committee, it's going to largely elect people from um, the majority um, sponsoring company, um, and you won't have solved your problems. Um, so his document is talking about mostly an appointed um, steering committee. In the case of projects that already have a large, very diverse contributing um, I base, um, those projects just have a straight up election um, with limits on how many people they can end up with from the same organization. Um, and that's how Kubernetes is written. And, and that would be the way to go if you're, if you're not trying to bootstrap. Yeah, there's some steering committee members that actually commented on the doc as well. Um, I think it was mainly around things like elections. Right. So I have a question. So will this become a requirement for graduation or will it depend on the project if the project already has some uh, election process? Uh, maybe it doesn't have to follow this and maybe projects that need that help, they need to, they, then it will be, become a requirement. I think my feeling is that it wouldn't be a absolutely prescribed model in the same sense that we don't really prescribe any models anywhere else, but it would be a model that we'd recommend and that we'd say, you know, you may have a, a, an alternative that works and we'd be happy to consider it, but you might also want to consider this as an option. Um. Yeah, it, it depends on, on the project. Um, the, I would see more narrowly focused projects um, as continuing to have our sort of quote unquote traditional model of having a group of named maintainers um, who are the senior leadership. Um, because, you know, if your entire project consists of like three different repositories and that maintainer pool is a total of 10 people and they represent multiple organizations already, then you don't have any good reason to add a steering committee. Um, the reasons to add a steering committee would be, you know, either A, you're, again, trying to bootstrap multi-organization and, and using this mechanism to do so, or B, your project is actually spread out across, you know, 50 different repositories because you have drivers and plugins and that sort of thing, and you want to make sure that the sub-projects are concerns are being represented in general strategic direction. Um, the, um, so, you know, those projects would definitely, a steering committee is a good idea for them. Um, so I can actually see, you know, I mean, obviously we're going to have all kinds of models, but I can see those as being the two main models for, for CNCF, depending again on the, the structure of the underlying project. Yeah, I think that really makes sense. There's no need to require the overhead of a steering committee if it's not needed and there's some equivalent way of having a diverse group of people controlling the project. If the project is, um, you know, a, a line like an ISV, would a steering committee allow the project to be graduated without maintainer diversity in all of the repositories? Or is the steering committee just a means to an end to achieve that? My read of this is that the steering committee is a way of ensuring that the project is not under the control of a single organization. Um, uh, so and Liz, whether that's sort of manifested in maintainers or a steering committee doesn't really matter. Uh, Liz, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so uh, one of the things that we have on the Kubernetes side is the steering committee is not involved in the technical decisions. So uh, the maintainer diversity seems to be more oriented towards the technical decisions. So I don't know how steering, steering is oriented towards the community side of things rather than um, 
the technical decisions that are made on a day-to-day -day basis. So how does steering, I, I can't get my head around how steering can help with uh, the decisions uh, that are going to be taken. So just, just two cents. Uh, I, I had bounced a few ideas back and forth with, with Alexis earlier. So, so I have a bit of background to the doc. Um, one of the, I think one of the key things that, that Alexis was trying to capture is that the steering committee can act as a way of, of um, making sure that there is a roadmap, making sure that there are some quality contributions and that, you know, the maintainers are not blocking roadmap requests or, or, or roadmap development items or, or, or PRs or whatever. Um, uh, because of say commercial reasons or, or or things like that right which is which is one of the one of the key reasons why why we want to try and achieve maintainer diversity here um so so i think that that was one of the key things there so so in in a sense effectively the steering committee does enable a way of controlling or or, or a way of 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 imposing some checks and balances i guess for projects that might only have a, a, a strong focus from from one vendor or one maintainer um, without uh, w where those checks and balances are ensuring that innovation is still happening and the the project is still working on behalf of, of the of the end users rather than just on behalf of the of, on behalf of the vendor um, so, so I think that, that that's what we were that was was Alexis was trying to capture in the doc yeah I I like the concept I like the idea it's just that how would you for somebody to that you know when you don't have you know control over the internal hierarchy within a company right so that, that would be the question here so so it's not about it's not about enforcing control it's 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 about adding sort of like a layer of of governance so so the steering committee would would be able to liaise with the cncf talk or, or or the executive staff um, and the idea being is that at least once a quarter or whatever they would be able to report back um, if there are these these sort of problems and and the thing is they the you know uh, you might even have a cncf observer on the on the steering committee and and, and they could help you know arbitrate or, or or negotiate if there are some blockers there um but but the but the, but the point is that if there is an escalation requirement. So for example, you know, an end user has submitted a PR and the maintainer has blocked it, then the end user has a route via the steering committee to, to raise that as an issue. And if, you know, some sort of resolution can't be achieved, then the, the you know, the, the, the TOC or the CNCF can get involved, um, you know, with, with obviously the ultimate sanction being that, you know, they, they, they downgrade the, the, the status of the projects or whatever. Yeah, and I would say ideally the steering committee would have some ability to actually um, uh, appoint maintainers um, because obviously one of the other concerns with having too much single organization dominance is that somebody who would have otherwise qualified to be a maintainer never gets promoted to maintainer um, because they don't work for the right organization. Um, so you know, particularly for projects that are trying to bootstrap that have a, you know, de facto majority single organization maintainership. Um, I think it would be important for the steering committee to actually have that power um, I, to, to appoint maintainers. And then obviously if they can do that, um, the ability of, of anybody uh, to cherry pick, um, uh, contributions for corporate strategy reasons would be limited. Uh, definitely worth exploring for sure, Josh, Alex. Uh, I, I, I think, you know, what we're trying to, what, what we're trying to do is to get the right balance of, you know, a, a vendor or an ISV providing enough critical masks um, 
to ensure enough maintainers and enough innovation is happening in the project um, and is incentivized to do that, right? Um, versus forcing diversity as a as a arbitrary metric, which might actually stop that from happening, and and and, and which might actually have a detrimental effect on the project. So so I think you know that there's there's a set of compromises and, and 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 maybe a steering committee might be a way of of helping with the governance and maintaining you know the the core principles of what the cncf is trying to do to, to ensure it's a healthy project that, that that is working for its end users um without it necessarily without necessarily penalizing sort of a, an isv or a company that's actually you know happily paying the, for the innovation I think there's some really great thinking that's gone into this document. I know, you know, Alexis has worked on it. He got some input from various people who've been involved in various different sort of roles around this, you know, different projects that have had issues like this. So, uh, yeah, I think it's really well worth us all, you know, digging into the details. Looks like there's lots of good comments on there as well. Um, yeah, let's uh, review it, consider it. Maybe uh, this becomes the future. All right. Uh, Ricardo making the, the point, this seems very relevant to the idea going around about Istio starting its own foundation. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I was interested uh, about hearing comments from people um, if they had any any stance on that. Or, yeah, so I mean, they they haven't actually announced anything as far as I know. But uh, um, yeah, you know, if Google decided to start its own foundation, then it would not actually be vendor neutral. So. And part of the reason of having something like a steering committee is just to assure that venture, vendor neutrality. Right. And I think we've seen from lots of end users that the neutrality is something that they really value. They really value the fact that the existence of a project is not under the control of a single company who could decide tomorrow they don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just a general comment, not about any specific project. <laughs> um, all right, so does anyone have any other business they would like to talk about on today's meeting? Uh, just one last comment on, on that last topic. Um, so they seem to be two kind of fundamentally different concerns. The one is the longevity of a project. So, so if somebody takes on a project and uh, it, you know, uh, collapses, um, then that's bad, especially if they bet their business on it. And the other one is that this project continues to exist quite happily, but um, that any given user or competitive vendor or whatever does not have influence over the direction of that project. Um, and that seems like a different concern. Um, so I'd, I'd be curious what the CNCF's sort of opinion on that. Are we trying to solve both of those with, with uh, diversity of, um, you know, company diversity specifically with, in the contributors? Or are we prepared to separate those two concerns and say they're actually different concerns and, and we can address one and not the other one, or we can address the two concerns separately? I don't know if that question makes sense. That was essentially a question to you, Liz. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Quentin. <laughs> um, I'm not sure why we wouldn't want to address both those things. I, th I think, and you know, anybody else, tell me what their views are from end users. But I think people want to see longevity. You know, they want the 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 future of the project to be solid and they want the direction of the project to be 
uh, I think Alexis had some quite good words in here about good faith roadmap. I think, you know, that, that idea that, well, we're not going to suddenly take the project off in one particular direction so that it particularly supports one particular vendor's model if there are other valid models that the project should be supporting. I think both those two things are, are important to users. But Liz, I, I think that the, the governance is, is mainly addressing the, um, the, the, the direction of the project, not necessarily, I mean, I, I think the longevity is a, is a side effect, could be a side effect of that, right? So I think the longevity, really depends on um i mean it's obviously related but i but it I, I think it depends a lot on the um um you know just the the usefulness of the project and the adoption of the pro you know adoption of the code by the end users um and you know even if something's under a single vendor right i think that you know that still can be achieved the longevity can still be achieved it's just that we want to make sure that the that the tech not that you know the technical direction or the the roadmap of the of the project isn't tied to a single vendor because that's that's generally why end users adopt right. Um, um, I, I don't think longevity is as I mean it, it's a concern, but I don't think it's as big a concern. And I see these proposals as mostly addressing the 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 the, the technical direction piece of this. If that makes sense. Yeah, and I think at, at some level it's it's slightly academic if we have a model that we think protects in some way in both those things. You know, if a steering committee model allows for things like you know the dominant vendor deciding that they don't want to invest in a project anymore, if there's still users and expertise and interest in that project the steering committee is in a position to continue yeah but then but then that becomes that that becomes the maintainer problem right that the steering committee yeah. doesn't solve so that's why i think we're trying to primarily solve for the that as long as the project is being maintained that it's you know that it's it's not it's not going in a direction that would like lock other vendors out i mean you can you can imagine extreme scenarios like um you know like like a service mesh requiring you know the use of certain you know i won't pick on a particular vendor but using vendor specific you know you can only use this vendor specific underlying networking interface and things like that right so yeah and i don't think that would be consistent with cncf neutrality principles um, right. yeah i do think it's important if we think about the de-risking of a project you know when we're saying that a project is graduated it's something that an end user should be able to kind of bet their business on really um i think we should be at least requiring some story on continuity you know along the lines of well what happens if you know, the single company decides they're no longer in interest in it. What, what's the what's the contingency? But I, I do think that the that the donating the intellectual property to the CNCF a, more more addresses that problem, like you know, than necessarily a steering committee does, right? Yeah, the the code ownership, the intellectual property ownership, is definitely yeah. that's that's already not an issue. Um, isn't the isn't the common failure scenario is the the case where uh, one company funds a project and provides the majority of the engineering resources to work on it, um, you know, implicitly influences the direction of the project, and very few other companies or no other companies step forward and actually provide resources to work on the project and and you know by resources i mean people with the appropriate skills and experience and whatever else might be required to be effective on the project um that's sort of the de facto way of influencing the direction of a project is to actually fund engineers to work on it and and when that works uh you know that's how you influence a project 
um, I think I think that the thing that I'm sort of worried about a little bit is companies standing on the sidelines saying we don't want this project to succeed because it's competitive with our project and therefore we don't fund it with engineers but we also don't want it to be in the CNCF because um, you know blah 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 which I think is sort of an invalid reason um, I think if you want to influence the few the, 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 the direction of a project you you donate engineers to the project and they work on it and they influence it that way and if you get blocked if you get you as a company get prevented from contributing in that way then then there should be some escalation procedure to address that um, but I'm I'm sort of wondering whether sitting on the sidelines telling a project what to do without actually contributing engineers to work on the project is is sort of a legitimate concern so is your concern about having representatives on the steering committee from essentially a competitor of the person who's doing all the work or the, sorry the organization who's doing all the work um it's not so much who's allowed to be on the steering committee it's more a case of like is that a you know the steering committee can say whatever they like but if if the engineers who are building the project don't do that then then like it doesn't matter what the steering committee says um so i just think it potentially becomes a political problem rather you know i don't i'm not sure that it addresses the engineering challenges you know if company x is, is doing all the development on a project and the steering committee is comprised of a bunch of companies and they say we want to do something different like somebody's got to do that thing uh, and if it's not funded <laughs> it doesn't get done uh, anyway uh, I, I guess I'm, I'm i'm a little uneasy about about the the control concern because i think the way that you influence projects is you contribute to them and if you don't contribute to them you don't get to influence them uh, which is a different concern than a consumer who has no intention to contribute to a project they just want to know that this thing's not going to disappear and they want to know that vendors other than or people teams other than me care about it and are going to make sure that it's there in five years time when i need it which is a different concern and i think, a legit I think that the steering committee model does help with that um uh, well, essentially preventing gatekeeping on the maintainers. So, you know, company A has all the maintainers and then blocks company B from having any maintainers. I think a steering committee model can help with that in terms of assessing whether or not somebody really should be accepted as a maintainer if, they're con you know, if they continue being blocked just because they're from the wrong vendor. I oh, think the steering committee would help, help to surface that how how is how is, does that help uh, Liz? like um when we say that just ha having steering committee is enough then you are basically removing the incentive for anybody to add maintainers from other companies right so uh, and they're going to say oh our charter says this uh, you know so it's enough so we don't really need to try I we don't really want to try uh, yes. so that's the problem and uh, the steering uh, the tech technical people will tell the steering committee, um, look, we, uh, here are the reasons why we can't get them on board or, uh, you know, they are here for six months and they are gone uh, or whatever. They'll come up with something or the other which justifies their point of view and steering committee has no way to judge whether the input that they're getting is correct or not. Yeah, the point about... Yes, can, 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 I, yeah. can I just... Um make a couple of comments on this, just to give it a bit more color. So, so we're, the steering committee is actually supposed to be composed of, you know, the maintainers themselves and users and, and people who are using the projects, right? So, so it's not, it's not like some third party arbitrary people that are, that are on the steering committee. And, and, and the other thing is, the steering committee is also there to, to help with the governance and to kind of act as a, as a, as a part to unblock things with the TOC acting as kind of like perhaps a final ombudsman for for you know blockers. It's not. I don't think we. Were, I don't think. Uh, yeah, I don't just completely speak for Alexis here, but I, I I don't think Alexis was suggesting that that the steering committee has this controlling function. It's more of a um, an escalation part and, and a way of resolving issues um, before they become kind of issues and and to help you know, um, 
work with the maintainers because the maintainers are also on the steering committee, right? Because at the end of the day, one of the risks for projects becoming unsuccessful is, is you know, if they can't get that critical mass of innovators. And if a project is currently successful and has a critical mass of innovators from a particular company, um, forcing additional maintainers to come on board just for the sake of hitting a tick box in, in, in particular criteria may not necessarily be beneficial to the com to, to the to the project specifically, right? And I and I think that's that's what Alexis was trying to capture here. That adding maintainers just for the sake of hitting a tick box mightn't always be the right solution. But putting in checks and balances as an alternative via a steering committee might be a viable alternative. Yeah, so we're out of time. There's there's some really good points being made here. So I encourage everyone to continue the debate. Uh, I guess in the document, we can uh, we can come back to it in a future meeting as well. Well, we'll also be discussing this um, in the governance working group meeting in one hour, Great. which is on the CNCF community calendar. Great. Great. And I think we'll look forward to your comments and feedback from that group. That will be really useful. Fantastic, everyone. Nice to see you all. Take care. See you soon. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.